Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, I've had a flurry of emails and texts and messages in the last little while from people who have inexpensive woodworking tools asking me questions on how they can make them better. So today, the video I had planned, I put it on the shelf because today I'm going to deal with uh, some of the tools that our people have purchased that are inexpensive and what we can do to make them work better. So let's get started. Let's start off with the table saw today. And the most important thing on a table saw is the blade. And I don't care whether you have a $1,000 saw or a $150 saw, the very first thing you want to do is to replace the blade with a good quality blade. And if you're on a budget, this is the one that I recommend for you. This is a combination blade. It's a 50 tooth and it does a good job of both ripping and cross cutting. It's also a thin kerf blade, which means it's a little bit easier on the motor on your saw. And inexpensive saws have smaller horsepower motors. Most table saw blades that we're using are 10 inch, but here's a little trick for you. You can also use on a table saw in North America, most of them have a 5 8 arbor, so this hole is the same as that hole, and you can use circular saw blades on your table saw. You can use a 24 tooth, I have a 24 tooth, and I have a 40 tooth for finer cutting. And if you check, you can see that the blade the arbor size is the same, but look at the difference in the cut. You see how the 10 inch blade will cut about an inch and a half deeper than the smaller blade. So if you're cutting really thick wood, you'll still need a 10 inch blade. But if you're just cutting small wood, maybe an inch and a half to two inches, a little blade like this is a lot less money and it'll work just fine. It's easier on your motor and it produces much less sawdust. The next concern for people with inexpensive saws is the fence. Very often the fence is a little bit inadequate and they can move around and what there's a couple of things there's a couple of issues first of all locking the fence down so that it doesn't move and I've showed you in the past different ways of doing that using mag switches but look you can use something as simple as these quick release clamps and once you get the front set up you can lock that down so it doesn't move and you can then then do the same thing on the back and lock that fence down so that it won't move. And now you've got a nice sturdy fence, very quick and simple. The other thing that happens with inexpensive fences is aligning them and that can be a real problem. And I have a video on this, I'll put a link, you'll see that pop up on your screen now in that little circle a link to a jig that you can make that you can adjust and what we want to do for that is you want to raise your blade up a little bit and set a distance for some different sizes of width that you want to use. So what you're going to do, for example, measure two inches out, set your fence there and align it front and back so that it's at two inches. Then get yourself some of this plastic miter gauge and miter slot material. And all of the links for this, all the detail is in the article on Woodwork Web. So go and check that out. And then you can make yourself a little jig that sits up against here and you attach it to the plastic. Then anytime you want a two inch, an exactly two inch um, setting, you put your jig in like this and you can align it. Of course, I don't have it attached here today, but then you can align your fence up to that, uh, clamp it front and back, and now you've got a perfect align. And you can do that if you do it, for example, two inches, then you can also make a one or two inch spacer. So you can go two, three, four, you can make two or three of these. You could flip them around so that they go from one side to the other. You could use the miter slot in this side. Most saws will have two miter slots. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do for a very quick alignment. Maybe not as convenient, but a very, a uh, very accurate way of aligning your fence and being able to secure it. 
And that's all it takes on an inexpensive table saw to align your fence and to start off with a good quality blade. And if you do those two things, you'll be well ahead. Now what you buy with a more expensive table saw is the convenience. When you have an inexpensive saw, it's going to take you a little longer to set up and a little longer to make your cuts, but you can get just as accurate a cut and just as clean a cut by doing those, working on those two areas. The next thing woodworkers talk about a lot are planes and you can see my plane, you've seen them in the background. All of these are old refurbished planes. Let's have a quick look at them. Here's a few of the planes that I have rejuvenated for myself and there's two basic things that you need to do. If you're purchasing an old plane, it might be um, 60, 70, 80, 100 years old, um, the first thing you'll want to do is to make sure the sole of the plane is flat. The second thing you'll be doing is to replace the blade because these old plane blades, they're often warped. Um, I've seen many of them that have a sort of a concave in them. Do not be surprised if you will play, pay more for a replacement blade than what you paid for the whole plane uh, because that's really the, like everything else in woodworking, the the, the blades are the most important thing. And once you get a plane, you'll have to flatten the sole. And if you look at this one, you'll, it looks like there's kind of a circle in the middle. That's because I had to sand. I had to sand this all down. Uh, and it's a bit of a tedious job to do that, but it's just labor that you'll put in. And when you get that plane, you'll be able to tell by marking marks on there and and watching as you sand and sand and sand grind that down and eventually you will get that flat and once you do that you make sure that the new blade you're putting in is absolutely sharp and set that up and you will end up with an excellent quality blade and for the cost of a new blade like this uh, you will have an excellent blade or an excellent plane that, you, that will last you years and years and years and years. All you'll have to do is sharpen it from time to time. In terms of sharpening plane blades and chisels, and we're going to talk about chisels in a minute, there's a variety of systems. There are systems that you can purchase. There are systems that you can make, and I've got some videos of when I've made some sharpening systems. And it doesn't matter what you select. All that really matters is that you're able to get your blades, your plane blades or your chisels uh, to a nice sharp edge and there is a system of doing that and all of these systems all work fine. Some people are very particular about the sharpness of their chisels. Uh, I used to be, I'm not as particular anymore. All I care about is that the chisel will cut paper and when you've done that that's about as sharp as you need a plane or a chisel to be. Good quality chisels are another thing that at some point you will want to have. You don't have to have a lot of chisels. Very often uh, one or two or three chisels will work just fine. This one easily gets the most work in my shop, but I have a variety of others as well. Now, how do you tell a good quality chisel? Well, one of the first things, if you're looking at chisels um, and you're buying used chisels, very often a chisel with an old wooden handle will be a very good choice and once in a while you'll find some you'll learn to know the qualities of better quality chisels and this is one of them inexpensive quality chisels will often have a very short shaft see how this one is much shorter than all the rest of these all of these are long and this one is short that's usually an indicator that it might not be a quality chisel the big difference between cheap chisels and more expensive chisels is the amount of steel that's here and the quality of steel and the way that you can tell better quality steel basically all that happens is it holds a sharp edge longer that's the big difference between inexpensive chisels and cheap chisels if you're working part-time as a hobby uh, an inexpensive chisel will probably work just fine you may need to sharpen it a little bit more often but it will do the job for you so you don't have to get expensive super quality chisels to get good results 
let's take a moment to have a, a look at sliding miter saws and chop saws and of course a sliding miter saw is one that moves like so now the first thing you'll notice is that the first thing i've done is even though this is a good quality saw is i put on a quality blade on this one in this case it's an 80 tooth cross cut blade the next thing you're going to want to concern yourself with is aligning the blade to the fence now these saws will all pivot like this but they have locks and once you're in a lock it won't move it's stuck in that position it stays there so you if you're if you need to align your blade with the fence what you'll need to do is get yourself first of all the first thing you want to know is is your fence split or is it one piece and if you look at this fence here you'll see that all of this all the way across it's all one fence so if you move the whole fence like this that you can use to align to the blade but some of these fences on different saws this part is not in here so this part is independent of this one so with this saw what you would do to align the fence to the blade because you need to make sure that that's 90 degrees you bring the blade down lock it down and then you will adjust the fence as when this is against the blade you will then adjust the fence so that it lines up at 90 degrees now if this was a split fence what you would do then is align this you would loosen both sides but this side here you would align just this side to the blade so that the blade and this side of the fence are accurate then when you've got that then you'll use a straight edge and I'm just using this ruler so you can see better then you would use a straight edge across here to align this fence with this one because this one here is at 90 degrees now you want uh, equal 180 degree side to side and that's how you do that if you do that no matter what saw you have you'll have a good quality blade aligned to the fence and both sides are equal you'll get perfect cuts the one thing that can save you more time than anything in your workshop is good quality bits and good quality blades sharp chisels sharp planes those are the things that will save you more time for example, a poor quality saw blade in your table saw will make marks in the wood, can make burn marks. And if you've ever had to try and get that, those marks and burn marks and scratches out of the side of wood, you'll know how long it takes to do that. So it really does make a difference having good quality blades and good quality bits and setting your machinery up. Uh, as best you can and as accurately as you can uh, and those things will make for better woodworking and more satisfaction in the workshop. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.